the honor and pleasure mm -hmm. of introducing El Presidente, That's El right. Capitan, oh. Andy Albright. Woo! Yeah. Okay, so um, I like this trend. Top seven people were over $10,000 in one week. It's not a month, this is a week. Um, Mike Levantovich pops in four apps for $10,600. Nitzel, eight apps for ten grand, And then DJ out of Alaska knocks out 12 apps for $14,163. So, um, you kind of like what I, I wish I had DJ on here to say, DJ, are you dead? You know, was that hard work? 12 applications. Um, I, I, know, I know he's a hard worker, but I'm just telling y'all, anybody that wants to write 10 grand a week can do it. It's just a matter of booking appointments. Matter of fact, if DJ, DJ usually gets up at like 3 a.m. so he can listen to these calls because he's Alaska, the time's, you know, different out there. So, DJ, hit me some numbers up if you got them. Just text them to me. How many dials did you make? How many appointments did you set? Man, same thing for Katrina Gustin. I think Katrina actually posted hers on band, but send them to me again, Katrina. Hutchinson, same thing. Hutchinson was the guy that was with me, the taller guy. Right. That's Mark Hutchinson, the one that Bobby was trying to recruit, trying to get him to be a referee. It was crazy. I'm here at NC State game, and I'm talking to the head of the Wolfpack Club and Mark Hutchinson, who was a big-time referee, right? Like he's a referee on TV and everything. And the guy, my guy's like, you should, why are you doing insurance? You should keep refereeing. I'm like, yo, I'm standing right here. <laughs> trying to steal my guy. Um, Katie Williams, same thing. Uh, Mike and Michelle, if y'all could shoot Katie's numbers or tell her. Same thing, Megan Wood. Text them to me. And Nick Neitzel. That is so crazy. Uh, ten, okay, so, so congratulations, way to go, guys. Um, I about lost my mind reading the Rolex watches because I thought this was the winners for the Rolex watch contest that we just ran last year in 2019. Well, actually, it was last quarter or something like that, and we gave away five Rolexes. This year, we have 13 Rolexes for the top 13 producers. Right now, um, the winning number one is Brant Swindale. That could be Jail Swindale if he get if he picks a female watch. Um, Cuz number two, Brandon and Ashley Beal with number three, and Ethan Dewar would it get a Rolex? I thought Ethan Dewar. I thought you won a watch. I was like Ethan won a watch. This is awesome. My friend Ethan won a watch. Go Rolex. But it's not actually the contest is just underway. So you got a whole. 11 more months. <laughs> Mike and Carrie Williams would have won a watch if it was over with. Um, I don't know who this, who is this Timothy, is that Timothy Sipe? Is that Tim L. Sipe? Yes, sir. Tim Sipe would get a Rolex. Merlene Felix would get one. Debbie Ben, of course, would get a Rolex. Stephen M. Oh, that's um, Stephen, um, huh? Mamaritas. Mamaritas, yeah. Margaritas. 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 Mar what is it? Mar Memoritas. Memoritas. It's like margaritas, but it's memoritas. Um, <laughs> Megan Wood, of course. Lori Reed would get a Rolex. Robert Wilson would get a Rolex. Paul and Rachel Van Thoff would get a Rolex. Jeremy Patton, Joseph Dukes. Corey Thomas would get a Rolex. What I'm talking about, Corey down there in Houston. Carmen H. Tell me who that is, Diane Lampy. I don't know who that one is. Carmen H. Terry and Tia Ed. No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't went too far. It's only 13 Rolexes, and I called off 18 people's names. That was not a con binding contract, me saying that. Okay. <laughs> all right. That's going to be a fun contest to watch all year to see who wins. Now, I got a better understanding of my scorekeeping on the 90-day drag race to win uh, Forrester's trip. So here it is. January, February, March. 90-day sprint. I'm going to take 40 people to Toronto. I'm going to pay for your airfare, hotel, and it will be a bad to the bone hotel. Last, last time we went, we stayed at this ridiculous Fairmont downtown. Looks like a dead gum castle. Unbelievable. Everybody's walking around with their mouth open. So, oh my God. I was like, oh yeah, it is, an awesome, it is a stupid nice place because Toronto is beautiful. And we, we meet all the executives at Foresters. We go to the world headquarters. 
we tour, we meet everybody, we eat like crazy. We had a five course or seven course meal at George's, which is one of the most ridiculous restaurants I've ever been to in my life. And then we actually went to see a Toronto's Raptors basketball game. We had a suite, we were in a suite hanging down over the court, all you can eat, all you can drink, everything was set up, we just had a blast. So this year, we're gonna do it again. Uh, last year, we only took like, I think, 15 people, this is for 40 people. But we did it kinda odd. It's 20 veterans, as long as a semi-veteran, a pro we call them, as long as a pro don't beat you out, then it'll be less veterans. And then there's five rookie slots. Uh, but but if rookies can kick out the pros and they can cook out, kick out the veterans. So right now, if we, if we took it, it would be 35 people going, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 rookies, not just five, because you guaranteed five, the rookies that beat out the veterans don't get to go and the rookies get to go. So this is kind of crazy. If you can see how it's set up, the rookies that are winning, Stephanie Rodriguez, Cynthia Ricky, Scott Carpenter, Brittany Flores, Fred, Fred Butler, Noel Anderson, Karen Gill, Eric Claymeyer, Jake and Beret Joseph, Tammy McMinn, Patricia Martin, Douglas Schaefer, and Tony McCool would all be going as rookies right now. And I'm not going to tell you the veterans, um, Andrew Peters, I'm not, going to tell you, I'm not going to say the veterans that got beat out, Minerva or Kimberly Spinell. I'm not going to say y'all's name. Pam, Paul Manichino. It's only, you know, it's only like seven days in. These veterans are going to come back strong because that's why you call them veterans. They've been around. But if a rookie's got a head start, I would keep... Now, here's a crazy one. There's a pro that's really kicking butt. Lisa and Eric Drudge. They're number 12 in the country. And there's another pro, DJ Jennings. He's kind of new, the one that we read out that had 13,000. He started last year. He got started in 2000. No, he got started in 2018, so that's how he's a pro. If they were 2019, they'd be a rookie. And then Cameron Ashcroft got started in 2018, so he's a pro. And there was another pro that's really close. Um, Carmen Hornberger and Benjamin Barry. Y'all are really close when it comes to winning with a pro ticket. Okay, all right, so this is gonna be fun to watch. Oh, the other thing with Foresters is a lot of people trying to write thirty thousand so they get a thousand dollar bonus. I don't know. You got a close? You got a shot at that, Annette? Any? No, it's next. Well, you could do it. You get a thousand dollars cash extra if you do thirty thousand with Foresters. You get five hundred if you do twenty thousand issue paid. Anybody? It's not just Annette. Okay. Thailand's gonna be crazy. Did you, the new people? Are you new? Yeah. What's your name? Denise. Denise. Who invited you? Lucero. Lucero. Do you know her? Did y'all know each other before? Um, she was invited by Evelyn. She was invited by Evelyn? I hired Evelyn, and Evelyn brought her, and Karen, who's sitting next to Denise. So, what, so what's the first one? Denise. Denise and Karen. and Karen. Hey, so we are doing an all-expense-paid contest to Thailand this year. All right? Y'all ever been to Thailand? No. No? I've been one time. It's really cool. It's a long ways away. So Thailand trip. And all you have to do is 125,000 points. So your first week, you turned in 6,700 points. So if you did that every week, you're gonna be more like 400,000 points, not 125,000 points, which will probably get you a trip. I know it will get you a trip. We also we go to Phuket and then Chiang Mai, um, which is pretty awesome. Phuket's on the ocean. It's got the um, James Bond Island. I don't know if you've ever seen those just crazy pictures of islands that look like they go up instead of down beautiful and uh, the the blue lagoon there's a movie about that and it's just crazy beautiful stuff over there we're right the the resort is right on the ocean um it's five star the food is just crazy talk and then chiang mai we're on a river at another beautiful hotel, and you're downtown Chiang Mai, which is cray cray. If you ever heard anything about Megan, I'm Megan about, um, if you heard anything about Chiang Mai or Thailand, it's true. It is crazy over there. I got a bunch of numbers if y'all want to hear them. Um, 
No, she she just gave me Katie's number. Oh, here we go. Megan did 50. Oh my gosh, this is a brand new person. Megan made 50 dials, 25 connects, and 21 appointments. Oh my gosh, 19 sits, 20 apps. <laughs> you go, girl. 15,000 AP is what she thinks she turned in. A $15,000 annuity she wrote. She found a $40,000 credit card debt. Oh my gosh. And had one recruit. <laughs> That's not bad, Megan. Way to go, girl. Um, That's just crazy. Here's Nick Neitzels that was on there. 138 dials, 22 connects, 13 appointments, nine sat on, five people helped for eight apps. And then Hutchinson just sent his in. 45 dials, only 45 phone calls. You should make. You should have to make 500 phone calls. <laughs> What would you do, Hutchinson, if you made 500 phone calls? You'd probably have like, oh, I didn't want to talk about it. You're doing great. You're doing great, man. Way to go. You're number three in the country. 45 phone calls, 15 connects, 12 appointments. In other words, he talked to 15 people, but only set 12 appointments. Does that make sense? Statistics, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Talked to, talk to 15, book 12. The other guy, he was talked to 23, book 13. Then he issue paid thirteen thousand, sixty six thousand annuity picked up. That's smoking. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's move on. Top producers. All right. I've, I've done enough recognition and tell people where you are. I think. Okay. I, I, I want to teach you something. I want to talk about um, how we make money. How much money? Um, not not how we make money. How, I want to talk about building something big. Y'all understand, this might be information to some of you, I don't know, but it's hard to get, it's hard to get extremely powerful, extremely wealthy with just you. You need other people. You know, if you want to be president of the United States, you need a team. If you want to be a football coach, you need a team. If you want to be a basketball coach, you know, you got to have a trainer, you got to have your fitness person, you got to have Pat, whoever it is. You need a team. If you want to be a great education system, you got to have a good principal. So you got to have a team. The question is how to build a team and how do some people, how can some people put a team together that survives and lasts and thrives and then other people, they're just a one-man show. That should be a country song. I don't want to be a one-man show. <laughs> okay. One-man band. That's what it is. I don't want to be a one-man band. That's the way it should go, if it ain't that way. I think that's the way it works. Okay. Okay. Here's, this is right out of First Things First by Stephen Covey. And it's my interpretation and Jeff Bright's interpretation. I love the fact that Jeff Bright, he reads one of our books that we read, and he always tells me, like, that guy didn't make that stuff up. That stuff was written in 1947. And this German psychiatrist, I'm like, wow, you know. So here's, 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 here's the concept that they're talking about in First Thing First. People like to belong because of a common why. If there's the same reason, like if your reasons and my reasons are the same reasons, then we tend to bond. Okay. By the way, these, these slides. Yeah, show the slide. These slides are on band. You can do you can you can you can print them out or you can follow along. You can print the notes out later if you want to. Okay, go to the yeah, right there. Go, go let's leave it right there. Okay, now listen to this one. We'll read it first. It's a feeling we get when those around us share our values and beliefs. We feel like we belong, we feel connected and safe. Humans crave this feeling and seek it out. So listen to this. How is it that you can't get a person to like something that they crave? Let's don't, take, off the, take off the words. If you're craving something, like let me, let me ask you something. If people are dying of thirst and you ain't got sense enough to give them water, is that making sense? If they're craving it, you should be able to deliver it. I am telling you, People are craving something. This is my team. When people crave it, give it to them. Does that make, okay, so what do they crave? People crave to feel connected. 
They want to belong. That's why all those people come in at red. NC State. That's why, that's why these gang members do this right here, and they got all these signs and stuff, and they'll kill somebody to belong. You tracking with me on that? Why is it that people can't get people to connect when people are craving it? I, I can tell you the biggest problem is because people are so self-centered on themselves, they don't think about what others need. People need, what was it, Debbie, Catherine? Denise. Denise, that's right. You knew it, didn't you? <laughs> Denise. <laughs> we'll go Denise. There go Denise. Denise and um, Karen. All right. Where y'all live? Burlington. Burlington. That's where I live. I live in Burlington. I live out in Union Ridge. You know where that is? How long you been in Burlington? Seven years. Seven years. You ought to get out of out of town. <laughs> Come out in the country. You know we're north 62, like you're going up towards Danville, going up towards Virginia. Do you know that? No. You know that area? You been? Where you huh? That's where I live. Okay. Well, no, I live in Florida. I live on Treasure Island. You should take me one time. Huh? Me. I should take you? <laughs> no about all that. <laughs> I see where I see where you're headed. I see you. I'd like the way you think. Probably be easier. <laughs> Denise, is that what it is? Okay. All right, Denise. People. Okay, listen. This. When people around us have the same values, if they have the same connection, we feel connected. In other words, let's say I'm around you and you love basketball and I love basketball, then we're going to connect. Okay? You tracking with me, Nick? So we're, in, we're part of a company that has a certain connection to it and some of you are more connected than others of you the ones that are more connected are the ones that share the same values as I have okay there's never gonna be a perfect overlap because I might like chocolate and you might like strawberries but I like dogs you like dogs you track them so it's the but the people that have the most overlaps are the ones you have the biggest connections with okay all right, this next slide is just psycho nuts. I'm going to show it to you. But um, everybody got the crave thing. People that have the same values. I'll, I'll, just kind of work with me here. I'm going to work you through this. So there's the book, um, the book that Simon wrote. Um, I, you know what? I said first things first. This, most of this stuff is out Start With Why out of um, Simon Sinek. Start With Why. There's some of it comes out of um, some of it comes out of Stephen Covey's book First Things First, but most of it comes out of Start with Why. So in his Why, you see how he puts the Why in the center, and then he goes to the How, and then he goes to the What. The reason the reason Simon what Simon said is if we have a common Why, then we need to develop a How and a What. So like um, it, let's say let's say it. I don't want to keep doing sports analogies, but let's say, um, think of all kinds of examples of why. I don't even know if I want to tell you their examples. I kind of want to stick to our examples. Okay, let, let's go with our why. Our why is have fun, make money, make a difference. Okay? G you can go back to that slide. Our why is have fun, make money, make a difference. Okay? Our how is we... We make phone calls to book appointments, we make phones to recruit, and then our what is then so we can sell life insurance. Does that make sense? The what is least important than the why, but most people talk about the what more than the why. Does that make sense? So um, the why, have fun, make money, make a difference. So. Like, when I meet somebody, I usually don't talk about the what, as I talk about the why. Because the why is the common difference. Y'all tracking with me on this? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying, Annette? Mm -hmm. you, you came over here, Annette came in, and go back to the picture. So sir, Annette came over here and wanted a job in telemarketing because one of our friends in telemarketing said, this girl wants a, a job in telemarketing. And we said, why? And she said, because I hate, what did, you, what did you say, Annette? 
How'd you say you, you want to be in telemarketing? You didn't want to go sell insurance. Why was that? I just said that. Um, speak speak into this. So I can't oh, I'm sorry. I, I all I said was that um, I needed to see what I could do in the telemarketing part of being on the phone, and I wanted to learn. Yeah, and we said, no, -uh, you want to make money. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <I said> no. <laughs> see, we, we, she'd come in with the what, and we brought her back to the why. Or Clay brought her back to the Y. Was it you, Clay? Yes, he did. They brought her back to the Clay. And, and he, he brings her back to the Y, and he says, there's Clay. Clay, raise your hand. So, um, so he brought her back to the Y. We don't make money. And then it was how, and then it was what. And then and the how was she didn't like the way where she was doing it because the, the how they had, was, she thinks is stupid. I tend to agree with her. <laughs> right? It's kind of stupid the way they were doing it. So their how was dumb. And so the what didn't even matter because their how was so dumb. But, but the why part, they were messing up too, and that we were right on to what part, I mean the why part, which is you make fun, have, have fun, make money, make a difference. By the way, we put have fun first, you notice that? That's different than a lot of companies. We, we, so how many of you, I almost want to say, how many of y'all are glad that we put have fun as first? Now, I have had people that work with us and all they do is have fun, don't make no money, and to me, I get depressed. Does that make sense? Like I'm going, like, I was having fun until I found out we ain't making the money. I got depressed. You know, money don't make you money don't make you happy, but if you take money away, it tends to depress you. Does that make sense? At least that's my feelings. So what I'm telling y'all is I'm telling you a lot of my why and see if you overlap a hundred percent. And the better I clarify, okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's. I kind of want to go out to the to the sides, but it gets a little bit. Let's go out to the sides briefly, Amber. So on the human side, you got the neocortex, the cerebrum, and the limbic. Um, you really, okay, I'll, I'll come back to it for you. Let's go over to the left side, the cause and effect. That's the stimulus, something happens to you, then there's a, a momentary decision process a momentary decision process. We're humans, so we have certain endowments, which is gifts. Then we get to have a reaction and a response. For example, the, the stimulus. Y'all want to make money? Yeah. Endowments. Make phone calls. Okay? It's, puppy dogs can't do that. Puppy dog wants a nice, warm house. He just stands there and going. <laughs> humans get an endowment, which means a choice. And that's where you make phone calls. Now, like, um, Gina Hawks was texting me. She was in a hot spot last night, and she said, how come y'all are not right 20,000? I'll tell you why. They're not thinking about their why. Does that make sense? I thought y'all want to have fun, make money, make a difference. You're out there in the how and the what. You need to get down to the why. When you get down to the why, which is <laughs> we want to win, then it comes how. Then you do the how. Okay, it's, 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 you got to get your mind right on this. If you hadn't ever heard that, get your mind right. And then the reaction is, we go to the 20 appointments, we're going to make sales, we're right $13,000. Okay, that's enough of that slide. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into the details of it. All right, next, let's do, do the next slide, will you, buddy? What versus belonging. What others do and what they accomplish may have appeal, but it's not the same thing as belonging. What that means is there's a lot of companies that say, hey, we sell boats. We sell boats. I love boats. I love boats. <clears throat> that's, that's a how, okay? That's, I mean, that's a what. Like if I had said to you, if I said, hey, we sell boats, sounds great. Uh, uh, we sell insurance. I'm an insurance salesman. Oh, great, I love insurance. I got an insurance license. That's what most people lead with. All right, come back to me. Okay, most people lead with that what? And if a person, listen to me, this is the way people recruit, Nick. They, 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 um, they say, yeah, we sell insurance. You got an insurance license, right? Y'all just connected on the what? Who wants to connect on the what? I can tell you, transactional, short-term people connect on the what? Long-term belongers connect on the why. You ain't interviewing right. You finding out if they like the what. I tell people, screw the what. We're going to do the why. And then once I get them hooked on the why, they do the what like cutting butter with a hot knife. You, you see the difference? I connect on the why. I get them to belong. 
I don't connect on what? The why is have fun, make money, make a difference. Now, there's more to my why. My, my why, I keep getting ahead on my slides. My, my why is really prosperity, inspiration, and eternity, which is have fun, make money, make a difference. If you can see how those go. So the prosperity is, have, have fun, is the money, and the inspiration is to have fun because you inspire people by giving away money, buying cars. You, who do you inspire? With well, a car dealer. He'd be like, woohoo! Seven hundred thousand dollars for a car. Woo! I don't know how much they make when you give them seven hundred thousand. They're fired up. Then you show people, hey, jump in a Ferrari, Lamborghini. They go, hey! See, so you give away money to inspire. Does that make sense? But you got to have it to give it away. So we, so we, but we do have fun and make money. It's kind of crazy how you get you. You decide how you line your life up. Okay. All right. <clears throat> this this might shock you, but the belonging is more important than the do. And y'all know how big I am on the do. Like, you know, what you do if you do something. But do is not as important as belonging, if you can believe that I'm saying that or not. Okay, so connecting on the why gets them more of a belonging than connecting them on the what or the how. You tracking on this, Clay? Mm -hmm. Do you see that you've interviewed people wrongly now? Yes, absolutely. And, and you, you think I care that they like insurance. People tell me that. They like insurance. Like, I don't care. They want to make money. Well, I don't know. They said they did. Well, did you connect on it? You tracking with me? Okay, so let's go down to the next one. The what? The neocortex part of the brain. Okay, so if you, if you go back, I don't want you to go back, but if you go back to the first slide, the neocortex is the what? That is the mathematical thing. That is the rational side that communicates what we do. It's facts and figures. Like insurance, everybody needs insurance. You see a big insurance building, that's because the insurance people are rich. You're connecting on the rational. And, and, and I'm telling you, don't get me wrong, um, the rational is important, but it's important later. Let, let me give you the best rational I can get. Go, go back to slide one more. That last sentence down there, analytical reasons to take action. Let me, let me tell you what the, where the what comes in. Once we connect on the why, can you go, I'm, I'm messing you up on these slides, Anna Amber. You're doing great. Go back to the one, I'm going to ask you to come back to this one several times, the one with the circles. Yeah, right there. You see how the what, you see the neocortex up there on the top right corner? Neocortex is, is the mathematics like this. Every time you go, you go to your phone, watch this, Denise. When you go to your phone, you're going to make phone calls, and it works like this. You, there's a screen that will pop up. A lot of people have never seen it on their phone. It looks like this. Have you ever seen that screen? Yes. You have? Have you ever used it? Yes. For what? You ain't never making phone calls. No, the reason you don't use this is because most of your phone calls, most of, your, most of yours looks like that. That's where you call from because you already know them. This is what you use when you don't know the people. You see what I'm saying? Nobody uses that. In this business, you're going to go to that part of your phone because you're going to call people you don't know. All right, now watch this. Here's the neocortex. See? That's the neocortex. That's, that is out there in the physical. Now watch this. Every time you press enough numbers that somebody don't say, pick up, you get $3.13. All you gotta do is dial the phone numbers. You go like, we get $3.13 for every phone call? Yes, you do. That's the neocortex center. In other words, if I go and I do the math on how many phone calls these people made, and they made, let's say they made $5,000. I mean, I, I can pull out my calculator, but let's say they made $5,000, and we determine that they made 5,000 phone calls, then that would be a dollar. But we know they didn't make 5,000. So if, if they made, I mean, let's, I, I'll do it real quick for you. Let's say you made $5,000, so just divide it by how many phone calls you made. So if you made 100 phone calls, this person made $50 every time they dialed a number. So Megan's were through the roof. That's the neocortex. That's how you train people on the what. You, you do the, the reason. Okay, go back to the, anal, the, the what slide. One more. No, you back up. You're right. See down the bottom, the analytical reasons to take action. Hey, dumb dumb, 
numb nuts. Go, go right here. Go right here and press the number and you get $17. But everybody's numbers are going to be different. We got to do it a few weeks and establish our numbers and then we can do the math on what to do. Does that make sense? I'm telling y'all, y'all, I know y'all think I'm the dumbest redneck in the world, but y'all not be surprised. I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for a long time on how to build a team. Interview people about the why and later on we'll explain to them the what. You, you can't tell them the what before we get them connected on the why. And the how. Okay, let's do the, do the next one. How is belonging. Okay. All right. How others form a bond of belonging contributes to the strength of the community. I, if I could just tell you what I'm thinking right now. How others form the bond of belonging. See, watch this, Clay. The way you form the bond of belonging determines the power of our community. And if the way you form the bond sucks, you've just helped our community suck. Does that make sense? Kyle? Yes, sir. You dang sure relate to this. Okay. Ha having a how, a moral compass to align with our why, empowers our capacity to be proactive, mature, disciplined, and open. Okay, get off that screen. They ain't gonna understand what I'm saying without my hands waving. Okay, look, 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 look. Nick. Nick. Where's your hand, Nick? Nick, if we connect on the why, that's how I formed a belonging with you. Yeah. That makes us strong. You turn around and connect people with you because of the what? Does this make sense? It's not. I get upset because now you brought these fools in here. And how you connected on the belonging is not good. Denise, you tracking with me? Yeah. You know, I, I hope Lucero is bonding with you on the why, and then we'll get to the how and the what. Okay? We don't care what we're going to do as long as we get our why. Everybody, who agrees with that? Yes. What do we care? I tell people, it, I, I could be digging ditches. If that's, if that's how I got crazy rich, mm -hmm. that's how I made a lot of money and gave away money to my friends, and if I was having fun, that, that's not going to work. Digging ditches ain't going to be fun for me. You, you see what I'm saying? It, I don't care about the what as long as we get the why. But if we get the why and then we get out to the what and it don't get the why, that's a bad program. Does it make sense? But if we, give a, if we get together on the why and then we show you the what and then you can have fun talking to people, woohoo! Okay. The way that you empower, the way that you connect, the way that people connect, the power that they connect with determines the power of our community. So you understand this, um, is it Catherine? Is that your name? Uh, look, look forward, that way they can see. Raise your hand so they know you're talking to. Is this helping you at all? Yes. Okay, so now you ask questions like this. You ready? Behind you, Nick, raise your hand up like this, the other hand. So what is all that about? What is this? Uh, I tripped and fell. Huh? I tripped. It looks like tattoos to me. Yeah. <laughs> I messed up, man. You messed up? How? Yeah. I uh, wasted a lot of money. You wasted a lot. Of, you invested a lot of money. I did. In a crisis. But I like it. I, I tell myself I like it. Let me see it. What does it stand for? Can you uh, tell us that on public television? <laughs> it's G-rated. It's just, a, uh, just art. It's just art. Yeah, I mean, it represents like a time in my life, I guess, but. How do you mean? Like when I, when people ask me what does it represent, I just think of the time in my life that I, when I was, what I, like, what led up to me, like, oh, I'm gonna get it. I'm just gonna get it, you know? So you think it, so it relates to that time, like, were y'all together? No. Well, when you finish it up. You helped him finish it up. <laughs> You'd be like, finish what you started. <laughs> this is a connecting on the why. You with me? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I've been through some junk too. Matter of fact, how old are you, Nick? 22. <laughs> I'm 55, bro. <laughs> you, you, you're getting ready to go through some more stuff. Believe me. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, you're getting ready to go through some more stuff. I am too. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's the why. I need to get through. Don't you? 
I'm going to, I like, I like to say this, give a brother a hand. I'm the brother, give me a hand. I need some help. You with me? I'm going to need some help. So what we do is we walk together through this and we keep fighting through this. That's, right. That's a why connection. Yep. We're going to walk through this together. We're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep scratching. We're going to go to ball games. We're going to go to concerts. We're going to go to Thailand. We're going to do stuff together. See how I'm developing it? It's, it's you, at, you ask, it's tougher. Well, uh, that slide's next. Okay. All right, now watch this. Go, go to the how on the blog, the one we are just on. Okay, the how on the blog. Watch this. If if we collect if if the way we connect Nick is on a moral compass that aligns with our why, it it, it improves mine and your maturity, mine and your openness to each other. You with me? You, are you okay that I don't have a tattoo? I'm okay that you do have a tattoo. I could give a flying. You know what? Yeah. You we in agreement? Yeah, we're good. That's a why connection right there. Does that make sense? Now, if he said, you chicken because you didn't have a tattoo, we got to disconnect right there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Or if he says, you don't like them, I say, you don't know what I like. Well, you better get your mind right. You see what I'm saying? Like, we have an openness. Proactive. Proactive. What does that mean? That means what I was telling you, Nanette, or did you hear what I was teaching you on? Remember that proactive thing I was telling you about? Mm -hmm. That's because we got a connection, so I'm proactive telling you how the arc works. Proactive telling you if you hire a bad agent, we're going to be proactive. We're thinking ahead. Mm -hmm. That's mature. You got a problem, you're going to ask me, right? right. See, see, how, see how I'm developing? This is how I have a business and other people don't have a business. It's because it's developed differently. It's like building a house on sand. It's like building a house with toothpicks or cards. It's the way it's built has everything to do with the way it lasts. It has everything to do with the second layer, the way it's built. Tracking with me? So if I'm talking about who I am and who you are and, and, and where you've been and, and how long y'all been together and you finished the job, you got him to finish the job. See, the whole thing mounts on each other so you can build a business. Y'all understand what we're talking about recruiting and building. And by the way, okay, come back to me, um, Amber. Is it now, on the television, when you're in a house selling, this stuff goes rapid fire and people... Put that girl beside you, Steve, and tell her to smile. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Y'all are on TV. <laughs> All right. What was I talking about? <laughs> oh, when you're in the house, it's quicker. And you don't you don't have you don't really build as tight a bond. You track them on that. See, it's a miniature net. You're only there an hour. It's kind of like an interview. Anybody can look good on the interview. Anybody can look good for 15 minutes and behave and keep their hair and keep their snot in their nose for 15 minutes. <laughs> but when you talk to a person multiple times over amount of time, then you, you get to know them and that's where you need to have it built on something solid on who you are because they, they can see who you are and what you're made out of. Your, your character comes out. Okay, next slide. Uh, this, I'm going to start rolling here. Okay, all right, so, all right, uh, this is so, so much, but I'm not going to spend much time with it, okay? Proactive is your thinking, see that, the thinking? Maturity is your choices, discipline is your control, and your openness is your judgments. Let me do it like this, if you are passive and lazy, you're not doing good on your thinking. You see how proactive in your thinking? If you're lazy, if you sit on your butt a lot, you're not doing good in that human endowment. Humans were given the option of being proactive. Dogs cannot plan for winter. And people go like, well, squirrels can. I go, bro, that's not what we're talking about. Saving up nuts is not what we're talking about. We're talking about building a house freezing some steaks and stuff like that. Okay, let's go down to mature in your choices. If you're a child, we got this girl that's working with us, we're trying to get her to be a woman. She acts like a 14 year old, you with me? Her post, her comments, her choices of boys that she hang around, she's like a 14 year old. You know what I mean? It's like, 
Hello? Maturing your choices, decisions. You tracking with me? So if we could get, if we can connect on our why and we can get her more of a human in doubt, you with me? Discipline in your choices. Um, triggers, priorities, controls. Like what discipline in your controls? Like what do you do in the morning? A lot of people that are broke sleep, okay? Then people get to making money with us. And then they start sleeping late, and then they get lost again because they got no controls. They got no triggers. Last one is judgment. People that are judgmental on others, you know. And, and here's the thing: like, this is I want to help you with this contradiction. Okay, come. When I say this girl's acting like a little girl, you can say you're being judgmental. I go like, no, no, no. I think this person. I think this person's insanely capable of being an adult. They're just making terrible choices. Judgmental is when I say, I don't want to say it, but it's like when you're prejudiced. You know what I'm saying? When you go like, um, you, um, you, 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 you question their heart or their soul. It's different than questioning what they're due. Does that make sense? I, I don't want to. I don't want to get into because I don't want to offend anybody. It's, it's when people are judgmental. Like, like you could say like, well, rednecks are stupid. Or rednecks have no feelings for other people. Like. You ain't never seen no redneck cry when he's drinking his beer? <laughs> that is judgmental of you. Does that make sense? Or this color or this accent, things like that. That's judgmental. That's no good. Let's go to the next slide. That's just, I'm just talking about how humans should behave. Okay, why versus belonging. Okay, if you're not clearly communicating your why, then you're not creating an extraordinary need to belong. Okay, so if I can get a total overlap with people, I can get them to do extraordinary work. Hello! Because they want to belong. So when I'm talking about this contest to go to Florist Foresters and go to Toronto, the what is go to Toronto and eat and have a, a, a thing, uh, have an experience. The why is we are friends. We are buddies. Then the how is you write the most insurance and the what is we go to the trip. But if all you're talking about is the trip to Thailand, you're not going to get an extraordinary sense of belonging, which leads to an extraordinary sense of work. Does that make sense? Like people run through brick walls for me and them to go somewhere. I don't care if it's Graham, North Carolina. I don't care if it's Union Ridge. If the bond is there, they will do extraordinary efforts. Now, you say, well, then why did you do something exotic like Thailand? Because we want to go to Thailand. That's why. Does that make sense? We didn't do exotic Thailand so your what would be so powerful that they start working all of a sudden. <laughs> They ain't going to change because it's on a more exotic place. They're going to change based on if they want to come hang out with us, Clay. Does that make sense? So if you're building the whole bonds on the what, you, you, you know, the, you, nobody's going to do anything extraordinary. Gina Hawks, when you're traveling around, if you can think about this, what are we building our why on? The connection of similar whys. Similar, what are we trying to accomplish? I want better for my children. I want my wife to be draped in jewelry. I want my wife, to, and by the way, she don't care nothing about that. She don't care nothing about it, but I want her to be able to say, no, I don't need that. I don't want her to say, I know I don't need it, and I go, well, if you did, we ain't got none. <laughs> that suck. Does that make sense? She goes, I don't care anything about it. I said, good, because we ain't got none. But if she says, good, I said, well, if you ever change your mind, there's your drawer full of stuff. Does that make sense? Um, okay. When, when you clearly communicate your why, you believe in. When you create the why, here's the other thing. If you are selling people on the why, Clay, and you don't believe the why, you can't sell the why. That's why I'm all big on these folks selling. Does that make sense? Because they say they want more money. But if they don't try to get more money, I think they don't want no more money. So they show that they want the money, then I think they agree on the why. In other words, one of the things that you will see that people have a big 
I disconnect is if they don't want better for themselves and their family. You will see a disconnect for Albright. I'll just look at them, I'll be like, you don't want better for your family? In other words, you just want status quo. No raises, no increases in lifestyle, no more money to give you preacher, no more money to give you mama, don't care nothing about the kids having nice stuff, paying for school, don't care nothing about that because you just income steady. People are trying to get more for their family. Does that make sense? Yes. Then I know that their why lines up with our why. And when their why lines up, now they can sell the why. But if they don't believe in the why, they can't sell the why. Like, let's say you're a girl selling makeup, but you ain't got none on. That's a problem. Does that make sense? It, it's, um, you, you know, me selling tattoos, that'd be a problem. I don't, you know what I mean? Like, you selling tattoos, at least you got them if you want to sell Does that make sense? The why's, the, the why's got to line up, and you got to believe in it, and then you turn around and sell it. Okay. Let, let me, let me... <clears throat> Let, let, me, let, me, let me see if I can convince you that I believe in my why. And while I'm convincing you that I believe in my why, I'm selling you on my why and seeing if you agree with my why. I believe in prosperity, inspiration, and eternity. Why do I believe in prosperity? Because I have seen, I, I have made money and I didn't see nobody else upset about it. Meaning, if, all, if everybody in this room, if everybody on this call was making $2 million a month, I don't think anybody would call us up and say, where'd y'all get that money from? They don't care. In other words, unlimited prosperity. I've given money away. Y'all need to come to this, convention of, to this convention this next weekend. These cars and the setup and driven what Barry Stevenson's put together. Um, I believe in eternity. I believe what we're going to do is going to make a difference. I think it's going to last forever. I think eternity lasts forever. I think eternity, I think eternity lasts longer than our lifetime. Our lifetime is a whiff. Boop. Gone. Dead. Out of here. Now you're in dealing with eternity for a long time. Eternity is a long time. You all have to deal with that. I am not getting through these slides quick enough, Amber. It's because you're not flipping them fast enough. That's the problem. I'm not blaming myself. The why, the limbic part. This is part of the brain that controls the feelings. It has no capacity for rational thought. Imagine that. Imagine this. You don't have capacity. You have no rational thought in the why area. Ain't that sounds crazy? You're now recruiting people and they have no control whatsoever in the feelings part. If you can create a feeling, boom, nothing else matters. Come back to me. I'm going to say this to you. Here's, here's what my old school boys know. When the dream is big enough. Y'all track on me on this? When the dream is big enough. <coughs> facts don't matter. Little guy got in the NFL. Dumb old redneck went to NC straight. Got rich. Little girl that her husband was mean to her. And now she's got a Ferrari. Little boy dropped out of high school, got him a GED. Now he's going to Thailand. Little girl, her mama said, you ain't going to be nothing. Yo, I ain't nothing. Your granny wasn't nothing, and you ain't going to be nothing. And now you got a trip to Thailand. Is you with me? When the dream is bigger, then the facts don't matter. Chip on your shoulder. When you're mad enough, when you're mad enough, it don't matter. When you want to get crazy enough, it don't matter. I don't have leads in my city. Well, is your dream big enough? Yeah, that's why I'm on a jet plane going to Houston where there's leads. Does that make sense? When the dream's big enough, facts don't matter. If you can get people big enough dream, then they'll do the how and the what. But if you can't get the why, you can't get the other stuff no matter how hard you try. Does that make sense? Feeling only is where the limbic part is. Next. All right, this is when you kill it. Belonging to a committed to a cause. You sit at the bottom, belonging and committing to a cause. When you can kill it on a why, the how, and what. If you can get the feelings right, and you get them believing, and you give them a reason, it's all over but the, the fat lady singing. You with me? When, 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 when that happens, 
When you start on the inside and go to the what, the why, the how, the what, when you pull them together and you build that house on brick and mortar and concrete and you do it on a rock foundation, you're going to have something. All right, next. Conclusion. People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. I do it for my family. Hey, look, 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 listen to me. You've heard me say this before. Here's the way I see it. God wants me to do good. That's why he says something. I wish that you prosper and I wish that you have stuff. There's all kinds of saying words in there like, I wish this for you. Okay? My family. You with me? How about me, my wife and my kids? When, when I say I'm doing that, can you agree with that that you want to do it for your family? And what else do I say? Country. That's the other thing I say. I like America. America, you can pray. America, you can spit on the flag and you can pray to Jesus. And you should be okay spitting and you should be okay praying. Does that make sense? I like this country. You can get rich. You can go across state lines. You can pack a pistol in most states. <laughs> I like this country. We got bubble gun, rib eyes, bone in rib eyes, cowboy steaks. Woo! Go to Vegas 24 7 lights. You with me? See how it lines up? God, country, family. You with me? If you can get lined up with the why, people, this, people buy your why, now your what. But once you get them on the why, now you got to sell them on the what. You got to sell them on the how and the what. You got to sell them on dialing. Like when I'm showing a play and I talk about dialing, I go like, let me show y'all how to dial. I show them how to dial. I sell them on it. I say, it's easy. It's way better than flipping hamburgers. It's way better than working a factory. It's way better. See, it's just dialing, talking, dialing, talking, dialing, talking. But I'm selling them on the how and I'm selling them on the, and then I get them on the what. Everybody got insurance. Money's, money's flowing. When I, was, when I was selling goats, I had plenty of goat poop. I had goat hair. I had goat horns. I had goat babies. I had, goat, I had a goat cart. Matter of fact, I got a picture of my goat cart right here. I had a goat cart when I was a little kid. Find a picture of that daggum thing. I'll show you. There's my goat cart right there. I had a goat cart when I was little. Check it out. Show that to Kyle. That's my goat cart when I was little. I had I, I put the, I, I took this John Deere tracker, a little kid. I tore the whole engine off, and I had these little tires, and and I put these two. Anyway, it's a goat cart. When I had goats, I said goats. Does that make sense? When I was in Amway, I had soap, power drinks, energy drinks. Whenever I've done something, you see my goat cart. <laughs> when I've done something, I've had whatever I've had. So what do you do now, Andy? We move money. Does that make sense? Now I got money in the backyard, money in the front yard, money in the bank, money in the CD, money in annuities, money in our... I got money. Does that make sense? When I had goats, I had goats. When I had Amway, I had Amway stuff. Now I'm selling money. That's how I just sell you on the what. But I first got to get you on the why, did it? Robbie, this is good stuff right here. You get people. Mm-hmm. Oh, we got... Oh, the app count. Let me see. I just want you to remain calm. Let me just, calm then. I had to triple check it. Oh! Is this right? Guys, y'all sold some insurance this week. Oh! Hey. Take that back. Congratulations. The second week of January 2020 had vision, baby. Y'all were grabbing and growling. We're getting ready to pick up the pace. Whoa. Okay. Calm down. Okay. Go back to my slide. Go back to my slide real quick. Okay. All right. When we talk about winning hearts and minds, listen to this. Hearts and minds. The feeling part of the brain and the mind part of the brain. When you can get them. Most companies are good at winning minds. We sell boats. Woohoo! The, you with me? The ability to win hearts. Okay, they, they struggle. Most companies struggle with that. Uh, hog farmers, you know, it, 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 I got you on the what. How do we build the why so that we can get the what? Okay, let me go back, come back to me, Amber. There's a, I read a book, a man called, listen to this, it said, um, 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 Moving Men. That's the name of the book, Moving Men. What it was is a guy that built this big company. I want to say it's Caterpillar, but I'm not sure. It was a moving, a dirt moving, but he called it Moving Men because what he did is he, he built his company on the why 
And then they did bulldozers. Because he built it on God and family and God, um, God, country, and family. And then they built bulldozers. And the whole book is about that, the way they think. That's what Walmart did. That's what people, big people, big companies start with a why. And then there's a thing called the split. That's when a company forgets the why and they focus on the what, and then the company goes to hell in a handbasket. You with me? Does that make sense? Okay, so 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 our concept here. We got it together, boys and girls. We got it together. Y'all showed it this second week of January. Recruiting numbers went through the roof. The number of people that went in class went through the roof. If your numbers are not smoking, you wait until these leaderboards come out next week. And you're going to be like, I thought he was kidding. I'm not kidding and blowing smoke. This thing's blowing up. We're getting ready to make like Mount Fuji. Boom, boom. You with me? Okay. All right. Uh, everybody out there that's listening to me, we've got to wrap this thing up. But people that are in here, raise your hand. How many are going to change your modify a little bit? A little bit. Just give me a little bit. The way you recruit. The way you talk about this. Okay. I was saying about NC State. Like, if you go back and look, if you want to be a part of NC State and they want to get you to give money, contribute to something, they got to get you why. They got to say, here's what we believe in. We believe in changing kids. We believe in getting smarter. We believe in diversity. So once they get you all on the why, then they get you on the, this is the engineering department. This is the textile department. This is the athletic department. They got the good fundraisers got to get you on the why, and then they get you on the what. You with me? You say, what about the how? Well, the how, we know what that is. That's where you write a check. The what you write it for. Does that make sense? So if y'all will adjust the way you're recruiting, find people like us. Let, let me tell y'all this. People like people that like people. And people like us. Hear what I'm saying? This means two different things. People like us. Another way to say it is people like us. Does that make sense? Denise, you like me, right? Yeah. Now see, you might say, are you asking her if she likes you? Yeah. Are you like us? You like us, Annette? Yes, sir. Kyle, you like us? Yes, sir. Kyle, you like us a lot. Yes, I do. <laughs> Does that make sense? Finding people like us. You say, well, there's some people out there that don't like us. We don't want them at all. <laughs> people that not like us, we don't want them. Liars, cheaters, bad character, mean people, people don't care about their family, don't care about their wife, don't care about their husband, don't care about their God. Don't have no character. Bump them. <laughs> Bump them, baby. We looking for people like us because we are people like us. Love y'all. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this helped. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah.